Well, good morning. My name is Dr. Chris Hill. I'm the Senior Dean of College Planning and Institutional Effectiveness at Grossmont College. Um, Angela Ferris is not able to join me this morning, uh, but she has been our SLO coordinator for a number of years. And so uh, I wanted to share some of the work that we've been doing over the last year as part of the Degree Qualifications Profile Project. We had a task force that participated in this work over the, the course of the year, we had a few people who went to a DQP conference. I'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, these were the folks, including our SLO coordinator, folks from curriculum, counseling. Uh, we had one of our deans participate, our academic senate president, and our president participated in conversations through the year. And when we wanted to also, before we went too much further, thank one of our original SLO coordinators, uh, Dr. Devin Atchison, who, as it shows here, led us through the original SLO wilderness. Uh, she was the one that started our development and helped to develop our SLOs, helped to develop a good number of our assessments, and so we wanted to give her a little heads up and a special thanks. Really and truly, though, we want to share what was the main problem that we wanted to solve as part of our as part of this uh, project. And what you see here is this nifty little flower diagram that we had that sort of showed the, the key, what we call GE, or general education, or institutional student learning outcome areas. Uh, they range, as you see, from productive citizenry through mathematical literacy, cultural competence, and so on, all with the idea that they would join together to produce uh, an effective integration application of knowledge and skills. And so while we found that these were good general concepts, the actual devil was in the details, if you will, in terms of the SLOs that were developed. What you see here are some bulleted institutional student learning outcomes that fell under effective communication. And you can see that as you read through them, they're, they're very detailed, they're very complex, multifaceted, and as a result, uh, we found that were, so they were somewhat difficult to assess. We did, though, however, give it the old college try at assessment. And so those included a number of ways in which we tried to really take what we've done at the course level. We had mapped all of our course level SLOs to our program level SLOs and also to our institutional level SLOs. And so one of the first ways that we attempted to do this assessment was to have workshops where we would take our course level data in those GE courses and re-examine those data and those outcomes through a GE ISLO lens. Um, they were somewhat successful, although very difficult to scale. And so that was one, one example of how we tried to approach it. A second way was for us to look at it from a more interdisciplinary perspective. We have for some time engaged in, uh, for about three years now, what we call a one book, one campus project. That project is one in which uh, the entire campus would be uh, centered on, the, the work of the a semester would be centered on a common book. The first book was the, um, uh, I'm trying to I'll just do a total blank. One of them was Silent Spring. Another one was The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks. That was the original book that we used. Um, and so we took that book and we had everybody who participated in that. They were interdisciplinary from culinary arts to biology to uh, humanities, to art, to psychology and sociology, uh, English. All of the areas that participated in that had events or common assignments that they used in the classes and we use those assignments to have a better sense of whether students were accomplishing the institutional student learning outcomes that were connected to that project. We also did a survey of students who participated in various events to find out if they felt they had a better understanding of that outcome by participating in these One Book, One Campus events. And the other thing that we did was to develop faculty inquiry groups. What those groups specifically did was to choose a GE ISLO. They would then take a rubric that was developed to assess that particular GE ISLO across assignments in multiple sections. Again, it was a successful assessment technique, but something that was very difficult to scale up 
uh, to address all GAE ISLOs across all sections. And then finally, one of the things that we tried to do was a survey of graduating students. That one we did first for the first time um, in 2013. We repeated it again this year in 2014 and used that as an opportunity in a culminating fashion and a very captive audience as they were waiting to graduate um, to try to get a sense of whether or not they uh, had achieved some of the outcomes we were hoping to, to achieve in the GE area. Again, none of these, all of these worked at some level, but were very difficult for us to use uh, to scale. So the goal of our DQP project and was to actually look at the degree qualifications profile as well as other associated resources and try to, one, really reassess our GE ISLOs and refine them by identifying some core competencies that would replace those that were in our flower diagram uh, in some way. And secondly, uh, was to develop an effective method for assessing those competencies, one which could be effective across all of the programs in GE areas and also be scalable so that it was something that we could rely on uh, across the board from in, in, in inconsistency from year to year. So there was quite a journey that we took in order to do this as part of the project. The very first thing we did, of course, was to attend the DQP conference in April of 2013. Following that, we kicked off the project at our campus through the college convocation and talked a little bit about what we were trying to do with reassessing our GE ISLOs and our assessment methods. We followed that with a number of conversations beginning in September of 2013 with the task force whose members you saw on the second slide. From that, we developed a draft framework for essential learning. And that framework was then vetted through various places and events in our college community. One of those was an annual planning forum that we have each year um, in this particular forum, we developed a breakout session that was focused entirely on that framework for essential learning so that participants could review the framework and provide feedback on how to enhance and improve that framework and, and its contents. At that point, once we had a draft and it was slightly improved by that breakout session, we took it out to various constituent groups on campus. Those constituent groups included uh, many of the uh, committees or operational groups like our dean's uh, council, our president's cabinet, but more importantly, it also included our academic senate, who was the one who originally, the group that originally approved the uh, original GE institutional student learning outcomes. Once we had all of those endorsements, then we finalized the framework for essential learning and presented it as part of our final project at the DQP conference in May of 2014. And so the question, of course, is what does that uh, framework look like? Well, in the end, what we got was a, an essential learning framework that outlines the knowledge, the skills, abilities, and habits of mind that a student has attained as a result of his or her engagement in the learning experience here at Grossmont College. And so when you look at this particular framework for essential learning, you realize that there are several key pillars, if you will, that hold up and support the mission of the college. Our mission, as you can see in this top portion, is really to provide an exceptional learning environment. It focuses on the diversity of our individuals and the outcome that we're really striving for is to develop enlightened leaders and thoughtful citizens for both our local and the global communities uh, as a whole. And so the, the five key areas that we focused on were, and you'll recognize some things both from the DQP and perhaps from the LEAP model, which is also very common out there, uh, a, a, an attainment of very broad integrative knowledge. That's something we would expect them to do by engaging in our general education courses. The attainment of specialized knowledge, which they would get from pursuing a specific certificate or a degree, some type of major. And then some broader uh, areas that we hope they will get across any course that they take here. The development of intellectual and practical skills, the, per the development of personal and social responsibility, and then, of course, the ability to actually take what they learn throughout their, their uh, process here 
and integrate that and apply that not only to the coursework that they take here, but also to their experiences outside of college as well. The next slide is a little wordy, so it takes some time, and I won't spend a lot of time going through the details of that, but you will see in various areas the same five things. Uh, under the first section at the top, you see the knowledge of human culturals and the physical and natural world. And that's obtained, again, through both GE courses for that broad knowledge and a major specific field of study and specialized knowledge. Under the intellectual and practical skills, you get a little bit more detail in terms of a bulleted list, some of the things that we really would like to develop in our students uh, throughout their coursework here. And again, personal and social responsibility. So that's where the intercultural knowledge and competence comes in, ethical reasoning and action. And on the left-hand side, because it does cut through all of our coursework, again, the integrative and applied learning, the ability to really take those skills and apply them in a setting, whether it's here or outside of the campus. So this constitutes basically our framework for essential learning. This is what we will then move forward on communicating to the college as a whole, uh, integrating within all of the different uh, coursework and student success initiatives that we have here on campus. Um, in terms of what the next steps are, one of our hopes is for the 14-15 year to really sort of step back and do sort of an SLO 2.0 approach. During that, we really want to then rethink our learning outcomes at all levels. Sort of beginning with that essential learning framework in mind and saying, if these are the things we want our students to leave here with, then let's map backwards and say, how are our program SLOs helping to achieve that? How are our course SLOs helping to achieve that and make any adjustments that we need to in those SLOs in order to accomplish that? We also want to take a little bit of time over this next year to re really review, redesign, and deploy some multiple measures for assessment. And that would be at all levels, including course level, program level, and college level. And of course, one of the goals of the project was to do the, um, the essential learning at the college level. And so the two primary places where we'll focus a lot of our work is through some assessment work groups where we can really take interdisciplinary groups apply some rubrics at a larger scale and assess these essential learning pieces um, at broad levels across the college. And we will continue with graduation and other surveys as well in order to get some, some qualitative information. And finally, as I mentioned very briefly, we have a brand new uh, Grossmont College Pathways experience that we're going to be developing in 2014-15. And our goal is to have that uh, this conversation about the essential learning framework and the development and reboot of all of that be integrated with the development of that new pathways experience so that as students come here, they know what it is that we hope their outcomes will be and we will be providing the, the pathway for them to be able to, to accomplish that. So I just wanted to take a, a minute to say thanks for listening. I hope, we hope that you'll find some of this information interesting and helpful. Certainly, if you need any additional information, don't hesitate to contact myself or Angela Ferris. Uh, our email addresses are shown here, and we'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have.